Hello, I'm Brian Jackson, the editor of IT World Canada. Today I'm at the Canadian CIO Summit here in Muskoka, and we're hosting Stephen Perone, uh, the co-CEO of DESA, which is a firm that's helping companies implement AI. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. You just gave a great uh, opening keynote um, on your work and on the history of artificial intelligence and where you think it's going and how much work it's going to be to get there. And uh, you know, one, one graph that I wanted to talk about was you compared Nvidia's stock today to Intel's stock in the year 2000. And you said, hey, are we maybe in something similar to the dot-com bubble? Are we in an AI bubble now? Do you want to tell me about that? Sure, um, it certainly feels that way. So um, I started university in 1999 and it was like the frothy height of the dot com. Um, and the fact that everyone um, and their cousin is talking about AI uh, and it's in every magazine and it seems to be on everyone's lips uh, and there's lots of money sloshing around feels eerily similar to the conditions that existed in, in 1999. Um, is, is that to say that AI is overhyped? Um, well, I, I think about it like this. Um, there, there were a lot of promises made um, at the height of the dot-com uh, and they all came true. It just kind of took longer than we thought. So um, uh, one of the promises was that we'd all buy cat food on the internet and uh, my mother literally buys cat food on the internet. Pets.com. Pets yes, yes. So Pets.com failed, but literally my 68-year-old mother will buy cat What's food. happening today? Killer. Yes. Okay. Um, and I think uh, a similar dynamic will play out in AI. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, the tremendous potential and the opportunity, um, they're, they're worth the investment and worth the patience. Uh, and it's probably good if we're a little bit sober uh, in our thinking about what the future is. Yeah, but it's not going to be easy. Uh, I mean, I think we can fall into that trap of just thinking that we can deploy AI and it's like magic, it just, it does the thinking for you, right? It's intelligent, so it's going to do the work. But you, you made the point that uh, AI, you said it's more like alchemy than it is like chemistry. And it, at this point, we're so early on in the processes of learning how to construct it that uh, you have to make some best guesses. So do you want to tell me a bit about the process your company takes when you come in and work with a client? How do, how do you prepare that data and where does your intuition guide you in constructing AI? So if we step back a bit, the first thing we do is uh, help the organization uh, come up with good, impactful use cases that drive business value. Uh, and we work on kind of proper sequencing of those use cases. And that's so we can build uh, momentum in the organization. Again, so I, I think the, we should all be thinking about the long term. So pro this is why proper sequencing is good. It also allows us to address the kind of data situation and the infrastructure situation. Uh, and then having really good first, second impactful use case um, builds up this momentum, creates this kind of virtuous circle. You can talk about it, you can get talent, um, you can get further follow on investments for future projects. Um, uh, and, and that's how we found it to work in these organizations. And consequently, when it doesn't work, it's because people pick maybe a sexy use case that doesn't have, that may have, may have like marketing value, but not actual business value. Um, uh, or, or they don't think of how difficult it is, or they don't take a, a prudent look at the data and infrastructure that they have. Um, with regard to the alchemy point, I still think it's, it's a new discipline. Um, people, uh, it takes a lot of intuition. It's just as much art as it is science. I think these things are changing. I think one of the opportunity places is that uh, we're building these best practices and these kind of design patterns and we're enforcing kind of proper discipline around building this. So maybe the first use cases at big enterprises uh, didn't have the kind of rigor to make them replicable or um, but, but I, I, in that they, they sort of did whatever it took to get these things to stand up, which was great. But I think um, if you want to do it at scale at, the or, at a big organization, and I think people should be doing it at scale, then you need to think uh, in a more disciplined approach. And, and I think, I think the, the, the transition from alchemy to like a proper science, or um, maybe from like 
more pure science to like an engineering, like an applied science is, is underway. Good, and, but you, there was another important message at the end that even though it's not perfect yet, and, and we're still working on figuring this out, there's some challenges there, but it is the right time to get started because uh, you might miss out on the opportunity of when it really takes off. If you, if you don't have the experience with it, you'll be left behind. Yes, I think it is prudent to make a long-term investment, and I think the people, uh, the companies that do it, will reap dividends in the future uh, in a, in a few ways. So first of all, um, I talked about these kind of first use cases that were stood up. Um, they need to be uh, put in a proper infrastructure that uh, they can they can be maintained over time. So companies have worked really, really hard to get these first use cases out uh, and use cases that are in production, that are deployed, that drive business value. But if they sort of, they sort of fall over if you don't invest in the infrastructure around it. Um, secondly, uh, there's kind of a momentum in terms of talent that I talked about before. You want these good use cases so that you can attract talent. Um, you want to give them the, the right tools so that you can retain the talent that you fought really hard to get. There's also kind of a virtuous cycle when it comes to data, where uh, you, as, an, as necessary, it's a necessary act, exercise to practice good data hygiene. Mm. So you clean up the data set, you get better results that maybe incentivizes you to clean up more data or collect more data or think smarter about how you collect this data. Uh, and then first, I think this is longer term, the, the, the exciting thing is when you have these kind of narrow AI applications working together in tandem, um, and having synergies in between them. So uh, a lot of our first clients were banks and we talked about this idea of like a brain for the bank. So this is like these tiny, narrow um, applications working together uh, to build something greater than the sum of the parts. Yeah, I, I've heard the phrase data is the new oil uh, a few times recently. And you might say that AI is like the combustion engine that's gonna put that to work, right? And really make the, the value I think um, people have been w searching for the, the, the right metaphor. I think Andrew Ng calls AI the new electricity. Um, whatever it is, it's, it's as revolutionary as electricity or the internal combustion engine. It's, it's a profound thing that will change. You know, okay, how we do so it. important to get started now. Thanks so much, Stephen. Thank you. And we'll have more videos coming up from the Canadian CIO Summit. Just stick to our YouTube channel here. Again, I'm Brian Jackson for IT World Canada.